everybody, Rob Mauer here, and today we're talking about an update from a couple of Tesla Autopilot software engineers. We've also got another week of China insured vehicle numbers, a new referral program from Tesla, and a few other items as well. Looking at the stock, finally, a green day after four down days in a row, dropping 14% off the stock. Tesla recovering a bit today, up 1.2%, still underperforming slightly to the market, and especially to Tesla's beta, the NASDAQ up 1.4% on the day. All right, first up today, some nice new information shared in a presentation by a couple of Tesla Autopilot engineers at BazelCon. Bazel is an open source software tool that Tesla utilizes in Autopilot development. So most of this almost 20 minute presentation is in context of how Tesla utilizes Bazel, but they do also share some items of general interest. I think most interesting among those would be some information on Tesla's simulation capability for FSD which leverages 5,000 FSD computers like would be in any Tesla vehicle. They talked about how they built their first full rack of these FSD computer farms in 2019, built their first full data center in 2020, and by the end of 2020, that was giving them simulation capability of half a million simulations per week or about 30 million per year. Over the last year and a half or so, then the ramp has been pretty steep. Tesla is now doing about 2 million simulations per week or over 100 million per year. And from the graph that Tesla has shared here, they continue to expect high growth in that simulation rate. Looks like roughly doubling or so in 2023. So of course, Tesla has talked about these concepts at AI Day. I couldn't remember if they've shared this exact piece of information, but even if they did, I think it's helpful to look at it again and just see the rate of improvement that we have seen in really the last 18 months and even the last year or so in the number of simulations that Tesla can process. And hopefully as we see that number grow, that drives faster improvements in FSD beta. So that was the most interesting part of the presentation for me, but if you are interested in watching the entire thing, I will put a link to that down in the description. All right, next we've got a couple of updates on Tesla in China. We do have new weekly insurance numbers, but before we talk about that, I do wanna talk about some reporting on rumors of Tesla cutting prices again in China that have been percolating for the last couple of days, more reporting on this over the last day or so. They seem to be primarily coming from reporting from Chinese media outlet Huxi, which has reported that they have learned from an exclusive channel that Tesla's orders are lower than expected and a new quote unquote price reduction method will be launched before the end of the year to promote sales. Whether that's a price cut or another promotion is not quite clear from their reporting, but this joins, like I had said, other rumors that had kind of been swirling even before this report. This statement was accompanied by a pretty lengthy article, some of it walking through the facts of the recent price changes and incentives that we have discussed, and then the rest felt very speculative to me. One item in particular stuck out, and that was a report from the founder of a Chinese car website called Autofans that has predicted that Tesla has only had about 50,000 orders since the price cut, rather than 100,000 plus, like some other expectations apparently had been. So this isn't some inside information that is coming from this person. This is just that one person's estimate. So I just want to make that clear. Some people seem to be interpreting that as some sort of leak of what the orders were, not the case. And then the other interesting context from this report is that even though this outlet is commenting and saying that they have been told that there's going to be a price reduction method, they wrap up the article by saying that, quote, frankly speaking, although Tesla's new orders are not as good as before, its reserve orders are enough to complete this year's delivery, end quote. Now, they do go on to say that they expect that Tesla will lower prices, but if they've been told this, there still seems to be some hesitation on their part. Now, following up on this report, Cena Technology has reported that, quote, in this regard, Tesla responded to Cena Technology that the news was not true, end quote. Now, personally, I don't put any weight in that. Tesla is obviously not going to confirm that before making a price change. That wouldn't make any sense. That just hurts orders. So they could only not respond or deny it. And if there was any inaccuracy in the report at all, they could deny it. If there's no final decision made yet, they could deny it. We already went through this process a few weeks ago where Tesla had denied that there was going to be a price cut. And then we saw a price cut on October 24th. So I don't really put any weight in that denial, but I also don't really put any weight in the rumor in the first place. Now, obviously, I think it's possible. I think there's concern that this does end up being the case. We've talked a lot about that. But when I say I don't put a lot of weight in the rumor, I'm saying that the rumor isn't really influencing my thinking one way or the other on that issue. All right, let's move on to China insured units. We have new data for the week of November 14th through the 20th. Of course, this ties pretty closely with domestic or retail sales in China. For the week of the 14th, the insured vehicle count comes in at 14,366. This is a slight increase, about 3% above the prior week's 13,900. 
So I think this is a pretty good number. Let's put this in context. If we look at the last three weeks, that gives us October 31st through November 20th. If we factor out October 31st, that probably reduces this number by about 1,500 vehicles. That leaves us with about 38,000 vehicles that have been insured in China so far in the month of November. Now remember, these tie pretty closely to retail or domestic sales. So if we compare that number to what we have normally seen for the second month of a quarter for retail sales for Tesla in China, this 38,000 or so number would already be the best second month of a quarter for Tesla ever. And this would only be two thirds of the way through the month. There would still be 10 days of data to add to this, which at this current rate would add another almost 20,000 vehicles to this total, which would absolutely crush any other second month so far. So that's encouraging. If we look at the quarter to date so far, so October 1st through November 20th, and we similarly compare our insured vehicle numbers to the retail sales from past quarters in the first two months of the quarter, we're already looking at almost 57,000 so far quarter to date versus the previous high was just about 45,000 in those first two months. And again, we still have 10 days left. So those numbers look really strong as well. Now, obviously we should be expecting these numbers to look strong because Tesla unwinding the wave should mean more deliveries earlier in the quarter. Plus Giga Shanghai is producing at a record rate compared to the last couple of quarters, there's been production disruptions early on in the quarter. Plus we just had price cuts, so demand and orders should be strong right now. So yes, right now these do look good. How good is still an open question and the persistence of this is still very much an open question too because with the unwinding of the wave, we should expect a weaker third month of the quarter against really, really strong third months of the quarter historically. So until we see how all of that shakes out, we're really not gonna have a solid answer. It's kind of like elections if you have followed that process at all where you might get a big batch of votes that are counted in a certain district earlier. One side might look like they've got this huge insurmountable lead and then the final votes come in and it's like, oh, well, I guess not. So while I am happy with this number, I think it's more good in the sense that we have avoided a bad number. Let's say, for example, a number that was down significantly week over week. That would be a more clear sign of demand weakness where a good number is in the best case scenario, even if it was even higher, still inconclusive because we still have so much time left for something to change with not enough data in to stem off or ease some of the concerns that exist around the Chinese market right now. So I hope that kind of makes sense. I mean, it's basically what we had talked about before, where we should be seeing this big spike in orders following the price cut. And we're still waiting to see where things go after that spike, where more of that steady state order flow comes in at. And if that level of orders is high enough for Tesla, or if they want to lower prices again to bring those more in alignment, and then what type of margin repercussions that would have. So I don't think we'll get a clear answer on that with even next week's data. It'll probably take a few more weeks of these insurance numbers. We'll continue to keep a close eye on them. But again, just to reiterate, even though it's inconclusive, this number is about as good as we could have asked for at this point. Definitely sets Tesla up for the potential of a very strong quarter. We'll just have to see how it comes in. Now, finally on China, a good reminder from Volkswagen today that even if we do see a little bit of demand weakness from Tesla right now in China, that's not necessarily just a reflection on Tesla. The China market has a lot of challenges at the moment. Volkswagen Group today announced that they have lowered their sales target in China by about 14% for the year compared to their targets from July. In October, they had already said that their 2022 sales would be similar to last year. So that was kind of when we saw the initial reduction in guidance, just a little bit more clarity on what that number is. They say about 3.3 million cars in China this year versus the 3.85 million target that they had. All right, moving on from China, we've got an update on Tesla's referral program, at least here in the United States. I'm not sure exactly how this is shaking out internationally yet, but Tesla has moved from dollar bonuses for referrals, at least for their solar products, now to a credit system. At the moment in the United States, there are no credits for cars, although I did notice that Tesla mentioned Tesla cars in the terms of service of the new referral program, so they're leaving that open as a possibility, of course. But for right now, using a referral link, you can earn 6,000 credits on either the solar roof or solar panels, either if you're the referrer or if you're the buyer. Within the app, Tesla's got a little referral shop where you can spend these credits with the most expensive item, at least showing up for me, being the acceleration boost at 40,000 credits and the least expensive being Tesla shirts at 700 credits. One item is exactly 6,000 credits and that is the Tesla wall connector, which retails for $400 in the Tesla shop. So that kind of gives you an idea of credit value. I think previously $400 was what Tesla was paying for referrals for solar. So somewhat similar value, but factoring in margins better for Tesla. Maybe not quite as good for customers since cash is obviously more flexible, but still decent awards and I would imagine Tesla will add things to this over time. 
All right, next we've got an update on Tesla's supercharger network. This is coming from Tesla's charging account at Tesla Charging on Twitter, which has announced today that Tesla has surpassed 40,000 superchargers around the world. So always exciting to hear about those milestones. Definitely not unexpected. If you're not aware of it, Tesla discloses the supercharger count every quarter in the earnings deck. So we knew at the end of Q3 that Tesla was at 38,883 supercharging connectors, which means that quarter to date, they have added just over 1,100. In Q3, Tesla had added 2,700 throughout the quarter. So given that we're more than halfway through the quarter now, it does look like we're a little bit slower of a pace here for Q4, but we don't necessarily know that this tweet is exactly on time or how that rate might change throughout the quarter. It's not too far off Q3's rate, but probably shows that there's not going to be some huge spike in superchargers in Q4. Next, just a quick update on Model Y. Of course, Elon had previously tweeted that track mode would be coming to the performance Model Y. He was asked about that again today, and he did say that it is coming. So just passing along that reiteration for those that are interested. And then we do have a bit of an update on FSD beta. It looks like 10.69.3.1 has started to broaden its rollout both last night and today to some customers that did not previously have FSD beta. So although not wide release, Tesla expanding FSD beta a little bit here before version 11. All right, last couple of items, an interesting one here from Pininfarina, an Italian automotive design company. They have unveiled some of the specs of the Pininfarina Battista, a $2 million plus all electric hypercar, which has now set a new acceleration record for a production car going zero to 60 miles per hour in 1.79 seconds. It also timed zero to 120 miles per hour in just 4.49 seconds. So extremely impressive. Of course, the comparison will be made to the Roadster. Not necessarily a fair comparison because number one, the Roadster doesn't exist yet. And number two, it's obviously intended to be a much cheaper vehicle, but the Roadster base specs, 0 to 60 is supposed to be 1.9 seconds, 0 to 100 in 4.2 versus again, 120, 4.5 for the Batista. All right, lastly then, some comments from Sony today. Of course, we had talked previously about their EV partnership with Honda. The company is intending to work together on that in a joint ventureship. The president of that joint ventureship talked a little bit about their competitive advantages versus Tesla, saying, quote, Sony has content services and entertainment technologies that move people. We are adapting these assets to mobility, and this is our strength against Tesla, end quote. I mean, that's fine to view that as an advantage. I don't know that I would set it up as being the primary strength. I don't know if that's going to be quite enough, even just to carve out a small segment of the market, especially with Tesla clearly already taking significant steps in that direction. All right, that is where we'll wrap it up for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. Also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and we'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, November 23rd episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.